Hello everyone and welcome to this video. Today we're going to be looking at Microsoft Power Apps and we're going to take an approach to Power Apps from a beginner's perspective so everybody should be able to follow quite comfortably. If you haven't heard, Power Apps is taking the world by storm and it really delivers on Microsoft's promise and vision to put app making in the hands of everybody. So it doesn't matter whether you're in IT or finance or HR, you'll be able to use Power Apps to automate and streamline your own workload and your own workflow. And uh, it's been doing fantastically well and it's becoming easier and easier by the day. So what we're going to show you today is a very basic app. We're going to be using Excel as a data source. And yes, I know that in a live production app, you'll typically not use Excel. You'll, you are more likely to use SQL or SharePoint. But if you don't have access to those technologies or those skills, then you can use Excel to streamline your own processes for yourself. So let's jump into it and I hope you enjoy this video. Thanks for watching. So first let's start with our Excel spreadsheet. And what we're going to be building today is a very basic expense claim system. So it's just a way for you to keep track of your expenses. So first of all, an expense means nothing without a date. So um, let's go and create a date created. Typically, don't create spaces in your column names. Um, Shape or Power Apps can handle it, although it makes it a little bit ugly. Um, it's better to just create the spaces in the front end, but in the data source, keep the, the columns without any spaces. So we need a date created. Typically, we might need a title for this expense. Uh, we might want to know what this was for, and then also an amount. So it's going to say expense amount. What is important at this stage, especially if you're going to be creating a Power App from data, is to get the actual data types right. So that in the date created, we want to go and set this to a date. So just say long date. And in expense amount, the, we want to say that this is an accounting field. And then we want to make sure that Power Apps recognizes this as a table. So we can go to insert table. It'll pick it up automatically and we can go and say that the table has headers. Right, so there's our blank table. We can go and save this to OneDrive and this spreadsheet is already saved to OneDrive. So I don't need to do anything else with it at this stage. We can now go into Power Apps. So if you go to powerapps.com and sign in, um, you'll see the screen that, you, that I'm showing here at the moment. On the left, you'll have a create option. And if you click create on that, you'll see there are multiple different ways to create Power Apps. So you've got Canvas apps from blank, model driven apps from blank, or then starting from data. And this is what we're going to be doing today. So if you start from data, uh, you'll see that it defaults to Canvas and phone. That's fine. You can't actually change that at this stage. Uh, but if you go into the app maker or into the studio from here, you just need to go and select what kind of data do we want to be using. And for this, we're going to be using OneDrive for Business. So if I click on Phone Layout, it's going to allow me to choose the file. So it's going to the actual file location where I saved this. And you'll see that the moment I open this up, it shows me the tables in, in this file. So if I go and connect to that table that I created earlier on, you'll see that it just goes ahead and by its own it reads the data and understand what the Power App should look like. I love this window. This is fantastic and it just shows you where technology is going for Microsoft to be able to, to do this automatically. So here we've got a Power App and if we click on the play button in the corner, um, this is actually what it'll look like on the phone and it's actually very, very accurate. So this will probably look exactly like this on the phone, which is quite exciting. So let's go add a new item to just see what this looks like. Uh, just a little bit of caution. Before you go and try and save this, just make sure that you've closed the spreadsheet that you've been working in. Um, otherwise, uh, Power Apps will scream at you. And that's one of the reasons why it's not a good idea to have Power Apps or Excel as a data source. So you'll see that we've got our data description, amount and title. We might want to change the order of this a little bit later on, but that's fine for now. Let's go and say we had lunch uh, with the team. And the expense amount was $500. 
and the description was um, lunch at the event after 5 p.m. because that's usually when we have lunch at events and then date created you'll see it's going to pick today's date and now we get to save this record and if everything works well and which it does you'll see that it saved that record into Excel and I can now see that in the gallery so you'll notice that the the fields that it's displaying is is not really accurate um, if I hit escape from preview mode you'll see that this is now back in design mode and you'll see that it's showing me the description but it feels like that's more likely where the title should be and at the same time it's not showing me the date and time so what you could do is just click on the gallery on the left so this is where we've got all of our items in um, in power apps that we can work with all of the different controls and from here we can go and customize this gallery to show us the information that we want so if we go and choose layout and instead of just having a title and a subtitle we can also have a body so if we choose this over here you'll see that it automatically tries and identifies which fields are more likely for you uh, to place in this gallery so again it didn't get it a hundred percent right but I can now very easily go and change that so if we go into fields and edit on the right you'll see that the title is currently set to description so let's change that to title then the subtitle is set to title let's change that to description and then in the body we might want the date alright so you might want something like that or let's actually change these around subtitle have date and in body we'll have the uh, description yeah that feels better all right so if I play this now um, you'll see that these things are listed in this gallery and it's not displaying the information that we want so let's go and add another one to just see what this gallery will look like with multiple uh, expenses so let's say we also bought coffee for the office and this was a hundred dollars and so this was coffee for the West Wing and the date was yesterday save that and now we'll see multiple expenses listed in the gallery which is fantastic one of the things that I particularly don't like about the, the automated apps is if you click in the gallery item nothing happens and you actually have to click on the little greater than sign over there so to change that behavior uh, you can hit escape and go into the studio or the design mode and then copy the formula from that icon and this formula basically says that on select so when this icon is selected we're going to navigate to the detail screen which is the detail screen over there and on there uh, there's a form that will allow you to see the data that you've selected now what we want to do is we want to change this so we're going to copy that formula because we're a little bit lazy or, or efficient rather and we're going to say instead of triggering that when you click just on that icon you want to trigger that formula when you select this entire um, template over here so first off we want to say that if you want to click on this icon we don't want anything to happen other than select the parent so the parent reference is if you look at the hierarchy on the left is always the thing that this control belongs to so over here we can go and say that when you click on this icon select the parent and in this case is the gallery and now we're going to go to the gallery and say that if the on select so when this is being selected then we want to navigate to the detail screen and we don't want to use any transition effect so that's what that screen transition dot none is doing so if we now launch this and just play this if I click anywhere in this app you'll see that it launches that record which is uh, to me it feels like a, a much better better experience what we can do in addition to that is show the user which one of these you have currently selected uh, or you have lost interacted with so if we go into the player or sorry the studio again we can go and edit this gallery so you could do that by either just clicking on one of the controls inside of the gallery like you can see um, is the case here or you can click on the gallery and then click on the pencil over there to edit the gallery 
which allows you to insert more controls into the gallery. So if we now go and say insert icon, typically a rectangle works well for this. So we can add a rectangle, put it on the left, make it nice and thin. So just go and see what the width of that is currently. It's 12, let's make it 10. And uh, you'll see that this is now showing up on all of these items. So we also want to change the visible property just for that rectangle to say that we only want that to display when the current item is selected. So we can go and say this item dot is selected. If that returns true, then it's going to display that uh, rectangle. So if we go in here, we'll see the moment we select one of these, it first changes the selection indicator and then it launches the record, which is, uh, which is working quite well. Now that the gallery is showing the information that we want and showing us what selection we have currently selected, uh, let's go and fine tune this even further. Well, first of all, let's go and change this heading. And if we double click on this label at the top, we can just go and call this something else. So say expenses. And now we want to make sure that it's searching and it's sorting in the way that we would like it to do. And if you click on the uh, sort icon over there, you'll see that all that this is doing is setting this variable. So sort descending one with uh, or it's setting that to the opposite of what it currently is. So if this value is currently false, it's going to change it to true. And if it's true, it's going to change that to false. And then this variable or the value in this variable is then going to be used in the gallery to determine which items are going to be displayed and how. So first thing is that you'll see um, there's a search happening. So the first parameter of the sort by columns is the source. And then the entire search function over there is the source of the sort by uh, columns function. So this is saying that we're going to be searching the table one, which is the data source with the following text. And we're going to search in the following columns. So we're going to look for whatever is in this text box over there. You'll see the name of that is text box search or te text search box one. And we're going to use the text in that um, and then search the table one, uh, the columns of table one, these columns with that text. All right. So that's going essentially what we're going to do. And that seems fine because uh, we only have the title and description. So I think that's perfect. And then that sorts out the search function, which sits in the middle of this function. Then we're going to look at uh, the sort by column. And if we go to the second parameter, you'll see that's got a column. And in other words, that's the column that it's going to sort by. And in this case, it's uh, it has the date created, which is perfect. And that's exactly what we want. And then it's going to use the variable that we checked earlier to determine whether it's going to be a descending or an ascending order. So if it's if that variable is true, it's going to sort it in a descending order. Otherwise, it's going to be an ascending order. So um, that's fine. We can leave it like that. Although in this case, it probably makes more sense just turning these things around and then uh, just set that to that. All right. So now you'll see by default, it's showing the latest items at the top, which is perfect. That's what we wanted to do. Lastly, we want to go and just update the order in which these fields are being displayed on the form. So first of all, you'll see that we currently have two different screens. So if I go back into the studio, disable that, you'll see that we've got a detail screen. And this is the one that we're currently looking at. Then if you modify this, this puts the form, which is uh, the form on the second screen, edit form one. So it puts that form in an edit mode by saying edit form, and then giving it the form name. And after that, we're navigating to that screen, which then exposes that form. So if we want to change the sort order of these cards, um, we just need to make sure we do it on both of these forms. Otherwise, the moment you click on edit, your form layout is going to change completely in the order in which the data is being displayed. So that might be confusing. All right. So in this case, we're going to start and typically it feels like title might be at the top. Uh, let's just drag it up there. 
then uh, secondly we might have that created at the bottom and you know, I think uh, typically that feels right so we've got the title the expense amount then a full description of what this was for and then the date on which this was created so um, this is up to your preference but whatever you do on this side you just need to do it on the edit screen as well so let's go and edit this and this is now launched on the edit screen on the third screen on a different form so we're just going to have to simulate that layout on on this side so we're going to have title the amount of that expense then we want to have the description and then the date it was created and just to verify that that is true just go out of that and yeah that's the same so if you now click on edit it gives you that nice or uniform layout so right now this app is pretty much good to go you can go and save it you can publish it and from there you can download the power apps player to your mobile device so either from the app store from the play store you can install the power apps player access this mobile app and start using it immediately it's fantastic and i think that if you told people five years ago that this was going to be possible they would have laughed at you but microsoft has done it so well done Microsoft and well done to you for building your first power app. In the next session we're going to drill down a little bit deeper into setting up form level validation to make sure that the power app prevents junk data from being entered. So we're going to drill down into some of the best practices for doing validation on a standard uh, power apps form um, and there's basically two ways of saving data. The one is through a form and the other one is through patch but for now, we're going to do a form and we're going to make the form bulletproof. So please join us in the next session. So thank you very much and have a good day.